This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Facebook. You just put up your little uh, window cling shamrock or shillelagh or shenanigans. Why didn't he just take off the damn tutu? I guess you just don't take him to a drug-fueled Vegas party yes. to begin with. I just felt my stomach fall out of my butt when it happened, dude. <laughs> <laughs> IFAF, Idaho Falls infotainment talk show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. From beautiful Podcast Park. What's up, Mikey? I don't know. I, was, I thought I'd try it out. Do you remember Bob Burtonshaw and the Early Bird Show on 590KID? I sure don't, but I'm sure like three people do. Their studios used to be behind Baskin Robbins on 17th. Oh, yeah. And they had this little softball diamond there. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. And it was called Broadcast Park. That's actually kind of cute. All right. <laughs> Homage to uh, what's up, Bob Burtonshaw. He was on the radio for like 50 years in this town. Wow. Look at him go. Crazy. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. Coming up on the show. We'll talk about McDonald's. What's that? We'll find out. Uh, also, a Taylor Swift deep fake, not that one. <laughs> the plot thickens and the Christopher <laughs> Tap homicide. Oof. Something fun for you to do for St. Patty's Day this Saturday. Okay. And what the almost snow apocalypse 2024 means to farmers. Mm-hmm. Oh, and some exciting farmers market news coming up too. Ooh, I do love me a farmers market. And this right here is where your advertisement can be heard by dozens and dozens. <laughs> There are dozens of us Mm -hmm. who love to talk about Idaho Falls, the town we grew up in, the town we live in, the town we love. And if you would like to reach them, click the info link at the bottom of ifafpod.com. Someone's telling us we need to get sponsors. Okay, let's get right to why we're dressed this way. Tonight Can was I show off my boots. Absolutely. Wow. I know. Aren't those cool? Yeah. In fact, why don't you, if you can stand up and maybe even you got to yeah. move the chair out of the way, maybe, but uh, give us a little spin or something. Yeah. Maybe a little. This outfit is just too fantastic. A little shimmy. If you're thinking Taylor Swift, you'd be right. It, it was okay. So tonight <laughs> was the Idaho Falls Advertising Federation Gem Awards. And you may remember our episode last year. It was uh, Barbies. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And But we weren't doing the show this time last year. So what was that for? The uh, We dressed up again for the Barbie premiere. For the premiere. But it was the exact same outfit that I wore to the Barbie Gem Awards last year. So that's why. That's crazy. <laughs> I know. I know. Now, that's the thing. I actually think that we were about to do the show right before, like... That Gem Awards fell right before we did the show for the first time. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, so, we'll be coming up on our one year anniversary this w- year. What a way we've, like, how far we've come. <laughs> we like to celebrate milestones. So it, so the, the theme this year was Taylor Swift eras. I have a sparkly tie. That was my contribution to the <laughs> evening. Uh-huh. Oh, and Guy Liner. You know, yeah. I like to be subtle. <laughs> it looks good, honestly. I actually think you look really good in Guy Liner. I think that should be a staple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. If Billy Joe from uh, Green Day can do it, I can do it. Right. I think so. Yeah. Uh, Now, I'm from the Fearless era. This is the dress that she wore when she was singing You Belong With Me. Uh, I mostly chose it because it was sparkly and also gold. Two of my favorite things. (laughs) And uh, you look great as a blonde. Thank you. It feels like Donna from that 70s show when she decides (laughs) to go blonde for a minute. Yeah. (laughs) But I thought it was kind of fun. Now, secretly, this is a Princess Buttercup wig that we got from Zerkers because I didn't buy it from Amazon soon enough. (laughs) Hey, shop local. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Uh, And I got this wonderful, Drea Todd gave this to me. (gasps) I got one too. She's the president of the other IFAF. The Idaho Falls Advertising mm-hmm. Federation. I got this Eras band. And what, what does yours say? Mine says Taylor. Okay. I know. It's way cooler. I was wondering why mine said ears for a minute. Oh. And then I was wondering why I'm now dyslexic all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, no. So the, usually their memory is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Like it takes them three or four years to invite me back to host. Yeah. But for whatever reason, I did two in a row. Mm-hmm. I was pretty impressed, honestly. And they had um, a Taylor Swift deep fake. Yeah, a Taylor <laughs> Swift AI that introduced some of the bits. Not the one you're thinking of. <laughs> Not that Taylor Swift deep fake. <laughs> right, right. Also, when you made that joke, the oh, that's the this is the other Taylor Swift deep deep fake that I've seen this week. Uh, hilarious. <laughs> I think that some people were a little like, oh, he said it, but like we all knew. You know, I always say the quiet part out loud. That's how you know you can trust me. You do. It's true. All right. So 
let's just play for you the intro for the award show that we attended earlier this evening. Well, hello everyone. Wow, it's great to be back in Idaho Falls at the Colonial Theater. Man, so many memories for me here. Played one of my first gigs on the stage right here. When I was first asked to be part of the IFAF, my first thought was, oh great, another shitty podcast. But when I realized it was the Advertising Federation and that Mike Nelson was hosting, I was immediately in. It's great to finally work with you, Mike. It's been a dream of mine to work with such a generational talent, and I can't wait to get this started. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host and the inspiration for my Lover album, Mr. Mike Nelson. Isn't that weird and freaky and kind of uncanny valley? <laughs> it is, dude. Man. And also, I didn't realize that Taylor Swift actually played here. Yeah, she did way back in the day. I think, yeah. I think 09. I mean, I know that Don from The Wolf met her because I saw the picture, you know, but I had no idea. Yeah, Taylor Swift. Swift's trajectory was quick. Mm -hmm. I think she came out with uh, "Teardrops on My Guitar." Oh, such a such a good song, by the way. I remember crying to that in the hallways of high school. Yeah, thinking about how no boy will ever love me. Like oh eight oh nine, and then she just hockey sticked right, right after that. Oh, I know she was she was great. You know, in high school, I hated Taylor Swift mm -hmm. because the boy that I liked. Thought that she was so pretty, and I was jealous, and I was just a hater. Yeah. And then, you know, I got a little older, and I saw how much she loved her cats, and I was like, actually, Taylor, you're pretty cool. I like you. I love Taylor Swift. It's universal. I'll, I know. I'll make fun of her, sure. Oh, how can you not? Like, but that's any big personality. She got the jams. She does. Her and her producer, Jack Antonoff. Yeah. And by the way, mad props to IE Productions for that video. <laughs> Max Metema on the AI, Gary Stewart. Mm -hmm. and Colton, you guys did a fantastic job on that. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And um, and you were actually there with, yeah, Don Jarrett from 96.1 yes. and 102 on The Wolf. Yeah, The Wolf actually won four different awards. I couldn't name them, but I remember seeing them, and I was really impressed. Don <laughs> is just an idea factory. Right. Well, and he looked great tonight, too. He's the guy in the morning on, on the station. Oh, yeah. He's the, the guy on the wolf. And then know? what's his partner's name? Jess. Jess. Yeah. And then on our way back to uh, shoot the show, we stopped at Wick Donald's. Yes, we did. You might be wondering, what's this Wick Donald's <laughs> thing I'm hearing about? Mm -hmm. So this is, I guess, an anime in like 81 mm -hmm. in order to avoid copyright uh, featured a McDonald's fries or something like that. But the logo was upside down, and mm -hmm. they and then they just flipped the M upside down too, which is so brilliant. And then a bunch of other animes caught on, mm -hmm. and and so that's what we've got here tonight. We've got some Wick Donald's fries, some mm -hmm. Wick Donald's chicken nuggies, mm -hmm. the and Shamrock Shake, uh huh, and most importantly, the Wick Donald's sauce. Yes. Yeah, you want me to pull that out? It's sort of a spicy chili sauce, from what I understand. It is. It is. So and while you know, these are still hot and fresh out the kitchen. <laughs> right, right. That's, the, that's why we're doing this first thing here. No one likes cold fries. Right. Well, and also, poor Rango has been sitting at my feet this entire time begging for his pup cup, mm -hmm. which I've been withholding from him because I'm a jerk. You want to take care of him first thing? Okay. And also... I'm not giving him all of this. This no. is way too much. No, that's a diarrhea in a cup if you give him all that. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. he's a chihuahua, but he will get a few licks. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Should I bring him up here? Yeah. Okay, come here. Baby, come here. What are you being shy for? <laughs> this is this is always the case with pets. Do something cute. <laughs> and then they bail. Every time. Every time. You want to eat a snacky? Oh, good boy. Let's get some ASMR. Yeah, you want a little? Can you hear that? That is the sound of a very happy dog. <laughs> that is the sound of future diarrhea. <laughs> He's a happy boy. <laughs> happy boy. <laughs> Aw, good boy, huh? It smells good, too. It's very vanilla-y. Mm. Thanks, yeah. McDonald's on Hit, mm -hmm. for hooking us up with the pup cup. All right, I'm going to set him down without the whipped cream, so I'm going to let him get in one more good lick. This might be traumatic for him. Oh, poor boy. Here, get one more. <laughs> He's got the perfectly designed snout <laughs> as a chihuahua. He does. He's got the perfect snout for a pup cup. He does. Yeah, he can really get in there all the way to the bottom. <laughs> all yeah. right, so let's break out this sauce. Yes. Let me get that sauce. This sauce. 
Ooh, they gave us like bonus sauce. All the sauce. There you go. Okay. As you can see here, the um, McDonald's golden arches are upside down. It says mm -hmm. McDonald's instead of McDonald's. It does. Now, do you want a nuggy or a Frenchy fry? Um, either one. You know, I Surprise think we gotta me. go nuggies. Okay. Like, I feel like the sauce is made for nuggies. Now, here's the thing. I actually have had the sauce before Mike because Mike went and watched the Food That Built America, the new season, without me. Yeah. So I went and had some sauce without him just oh, to make whatever. him feel some of the betrayal that I did. Season four is out now on Hulu. It's amazing. It's so good. Let's see. Pop-Tarts, Starbucks, um, Ego Waffles. Yeah. What's the one I watched today? Peanut uh, butter, the battle Popeyes between and, um, Peter Chick Pan, Chip, and, and Skippy. Yeah, chicken. Yeah. Okay, so let's dip it in the sauce. Shall she Check out the viscous. <laughs> Great rhyme. Isn't that amazing how it just, I mean, I'm sure it's got partially now, hydrogenated emulsification going on there. <laughs> now, I've got a boot. Do you also have a boot? Oh, I have. I think you got a boot. Mm. It's boot time. <laughs> okay, so what are we feeling here? Oh, there goes the heat. There goes the chili mm -hmm. sauce. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, realistically, I think that this is just like if they took their sweet and sour sauce and they added spice to it. Some chili pow. Mm-hmm. It is spicier, I believe, than any other McDonald's dip in sauce I've ever had. You know, it might be. And also, realistically, I think that this is what Szechuan sauce tastes like. Let's talk about that. Uh-huh. So... This isn't the first time. I mean, McDonald's has always been doing tie-ins mm -hmm. since the invention of the Happy Meal. Oh, yeah. In April, April 1st, actually, of 2017, mm -hmm. Rick and Morty had an episode that talked about the 1998 mm -hmm. Szechuan sauce Mulan tie-in mm -hmm. that McDonald's did and had mm -hmm. for a minute and wanted to bring it back. Right. So... Like, okay, the whole concept of McDonald's is, you know, when a character in an anime goes from their universe to an alternate universe? Right. And so there's all sorts of new fun stuff to explore. It falls under a word, isekai. Thank you. I yes. think that's the concept. So pretty much every episode of Rick and Morty. Yeah, They go basically. to a new universe. Mm -hmm. Rick and Morty is all about the multiverse. Mm -hmm. Anyway... Episode airs on April 1st, 2017, Bring Back the McDonald's Szechuan Sauce. Mm -hmm. Six months later, in October of 2017, they brought it back. Which is so cool, honestly. But then there was a run on stores. Mm -hmm. People got upset because they didn't get theirs. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't make everybody happy. Right. Do you remember that one guy who, like, had a whole fit and, like, stomped? Like, he hopped up on the counter and started stomping and screaming for Szechuan Sauce? <laughs> yeah. Like, that was good. Like, like, People are terrible. It's like he thought that the employees were in, intentionally holding back Szechuan sauce so yeah. that he couldn't have it, you know? Why are you doing this to me? Right. I think that um, I think that these days we've strayed farther and farther from God's light, <laughs> but also the concept that we and we alone are responsible for our feelings in between an action and our reaction. Mm. Like the personal responsibility right. has been taken off of us now. I'm not responsible for your feelings. You are. <laughs> How did I get off on that? Have yeah. you noticed, though, that McDonald's has the best Sprite? Yes, mm. they do. Well, and I know that they have all kinds of formulas to make it the best Sprite. It's just right. And I think that they very specifically make it so that it's perfectly sweet to contrast the saltiness of the McDonald's French fry. May I have a sip of your tasty beverage to <laughs> wash this down? <laughs> mm. Okay, you want to know something crazy, though? Huh. So the other day, I was driving down the road, and I called up my friend because I was heading to her new shop. My friend actually just took over Lily's over on A Street. It's a little consignment shop. It's so super cute. And honestly, everything she's doing is making it so, so, so nice. I'm so excited for her. Anyway, point is, uh, I was like, hey, buddy, I'm heading over to the shop to help you out. Do you want some food? Uh, what do you want? And she's like, man, I could really go for some McDonald's French fries. Can you just make sure that they do no salt on it? I'm sorry, what? No salt. <laughs> I know. I know. 
like a demon, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like what kind of inhuman person asks for no salt on their, that's the best part of the fry. The salt that's like, is, it's exactly, it's like ordering pie a la mode without the ice cream. Or Oreos without the cream. Right. Right. Yeah. And I did do it for her, but I will say I did feel some shame ordering that. So just <laughs> so you know, I love you so much that I did it anyway, but... Maybe I, rethink your choices, girl. <laughs> I'm the kind of person who's disappointed when the when they're not fries salty are enough. undersalted. Yeah. Right, right. With well, a hot, salty, greasy tater. Right. Well, and here's the thing. I've heard that one of the reasons that people do that is because it means that you'll get a fresher French fry, but also then you'll get a less salty French fry. <laughs> and really, I would have like a day old French fry with lots of salt than a fresh French fry with no salt. <laughs> right. Agreed. You know? One hundred. Yeah. Do you want to give a Frenchy fry to the Frenchy guy? I do, actually. <laughs> you know me, the man? He likes to eat the Frenchy fry. Mm. And, and he's good at catching him. <laughs> and let's not get distracted from what I feel is bigger than McDonald's, which is the Shamrock Shake mm -hmm. is back. <laughs> do you know those things are like 500 calories for the small? <laughs> And 800 and that's calories. That's probably 40 calor calories is, in that one sip. This is the large. I think you have to get the large items in order to get the Wick Donald's branded stuff, don't you? Or the medium, at least. That's sort of what they were saying, yeah. yeah. So the other day, I got a Shamrock Oreo um, McFlurry. Mm. But of course, how I ordered it was, hey, can I have Yum. a Shamrock Oreo shake? And she was like, oh, we don't have that. And I was like, I just saw the advertisement. What do you mean? And she's like, oh, do you mean the Shamrock Oreo McFlurry? Okay. And it's like... Close enough. Just give me the thing. One of those pedantic and semantic people. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. don't need your guff. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And also, the whole thing reminded me of this sitcom that I watched way back in the day. It was called Raising Hope, where one of the characters who's on death row orders a shamrock shake and a McRib because they don't tend to occur <laughs> at the same time of year. So she was trying to like... Put off her execution, oh. <laughs> which is super dark and funny. And in the series, it did work for a minute, mm. <laughs> and then it didn't. I wonder if that would have worked. To hear the perfect segue into our first follow-up, <laughs> I wonder if that would have worked on Thomas Eugene Creech, mm -hmm. the um, serial killer that we failed to execute, as we mentioned in our episode last week. Not us personally, but us as in Idaho. <laughs> we as in the Idaho <laughs> Department of Corrections. <laughs> right. We as a you know community and as a whole. <laughs> yeah. Um, you asked what his last meal was. I think I did, yeah. I, I made the highly inappropriate joke that I was jealous that he gets to have two last meals. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> think about it. We all get a last meal. Well, yeah, we just don't, we we don't just know don't what know. will be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His last meal was fried chicken, mashed potatoes, gravy, corn, rolls, and ice cream. I mean, not bad, but kind of basic? Yeah, and I don't know if that thing, that TV thing would work in real life. Like, I, th I think they do their best to accommodate the last meal request right. within reason. Right. You I know, get that. We've already spent 50 years of taxpayer dollars housing and feeding this dude. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, I think that they'll do some kind of nice stuff. I wonder what know? his... So that was his second to the last, last meal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Will he just have a do-over for the next one? You know, honestly, that's kind of great for him because then he can rethink it. Like, if there was something that was kind of disappointing... He can be like, okay, instead of fried chicken, I actually want this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Can we do the fried chicken was a little overdone last <laughs> time. Can you just, can you make a Chick-fil-A? Would that be, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't he order in and out They got a brand new in and out in Boise. <laughs> okay. Here's a really dark question. Mm. If you could choose your last meal, what would it, what would it be? in and out Really? Yeah. Or maybe like... Um, Lou Malnati's deep dish pizza from Chicago. Ooh, that's good. That's some good, good stuff. Mm. Mm. Maybe a super dog. Oh, that's a nice one. Also from Chicago. With that neon green relish yes. that you love. Uh -huh. Yeah. True Vienna beef <laughs> wiener in there. Yeah, you want a nice wiener for your last meal? Mm -hmm. Put it in my mouth. <laughs> I just watched the uh, Oscar Mayer episode of the food that built america fascinating show 
It, right? it really, it's the perfect balance of I don't really care about this. Right. Yeah. So you can kind of also stare at memes on your phone. Like you don't have to feel, you don't have to feel bad about not knowing these facts. These aren't like politics where you're supposed to be involved. You know. Did you know that wieners used to come in just a big barrel? And the different oh. manufacturers that would provide the the hot dogs mm -hmm. would just, they'd throw them all into, before Oscar Mayer put that yellow band around each dog. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, we've come I a long way in the last 100 years. Now, I know pickles used to come in a barrel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I did not know that about yeah. Oscar Mayer wieners it's or wieners in general. Wieners in a barrel. <laughs> Let me teach you about wieners. <laughs> it's like sex ed, which <laughs> God knows most of us didn't get. <laughs> All right. Let's get through some uh, other follow-ups. We were wondering what makes pop rocks go pop. Okay. And I feel so dumb because as soon as we left that episode, I was like, I already knew this. My mom told me when I was a kid and I forgot. Oh, okay. It's carbon dioxide. I guessed nitrogen. Right, right. Yeah, I, I don't know, some gas. But yeah, it's pressurized carbon dioxide mm -hmm. in these little sugar bubbles. And yes, Crazy. you can give it to dogs, but you but you probably shouldn't, not because of the gas that's inside, but because of, you know, you shouldn't give dogs so much sugar. Oh, okay. Well, we've already blown that rule this episode. <laughs> Uh, he only had a little bit of whipped cream. He didn't. <laughs> he didn't even have the whole pop cup. I feel proud of that. <laughs> the other follow up is: uh, Do they actually fry Mexican fried ice cream? The answer is yes. Oh, what they do? Are you giving him some on the slide? Just a little. <laughs> just, just a lick. Just what, a lickle. <laughs> what they do is they scoop the ice cream. Oh, it's on his nose. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he is moving. They uh, put it into a ball. They freeze huh? the ball. Oh. Then they bring it out, bread it. And deep fry it. Okay. Only actually, for like 20 or 30 sense. seconds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's when you get it. The outside is crisp and tasty. Yeah. It, the little shell there. And it's the, really nice. I, it's, yeah. I mean, I've had Mexican marbles. fried ice cream. And also, I think it's fascinating that they came, they came up with that before the whole deep fried food phase. You know, because I yeah. know I had it before I went to the fair and everything was suddenly deep fried. Everything. <laughs> like and, and Snickers not only deep fried, but on a stick. Yeah. yeah. Yes. A deep fried and on a stick. Can we do Mexican fried ice cream on a stick? I bet we could. I bet we could. And I bet do we'd Mexican make a killing. Mexican corn on a stick. Well, yeah. That's, yeah. that's sort of standard. El elote loco. That's how you eat it. It's mm -hmm. on a stick. <laughs> I mean, there's ice cream on a stick. Yeah. yeah well, that's, that's not too far-fetched. Uh-huh. Next follow up, we posted a video. I tried to make it very clear, and there was one place I didn't, and that was on YouTube because YouTube only allows really like ridiculously short space, I think 100 characters right. for the description. Mm -hmm. We posted a video of skateboarder Dave Mull skateboarding, dropping in <laughs> from the top of the, can I remember this? The La Cunada United Methodist Church in La Cunada, Flint Ridge, California. Wow. It's sort of in between um, Burbank and Pasadena, I want to say. Yeah. Anyway, it's a very similarly shaped church roof mm -hmm. to the one on the corner of 17th and Woodruff that I refer to as the mm -hmm. Ski Slope Church. I called it the Nun Run. <laughs> yeah. It's the Christ the King Catholic Church. That's correct. Okay. Tammy, with my favorite comment, just wrote WWJD. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is so funny, and I love that. I mean, the guy kind of looks like an American <laughs> depiction of Jesus in that he's he white with long, curly hair. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah. He does. And I think we know by now, right? There were no white people in the Bible. Let, yeah. me, let me say that again. There were no white people in the Bible. This took place in the Middle East. Yeah, no. You know, 5,000 to 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I was what I wanted to post as a comment was: Do you remember the Kevin Smith movie Dogma? No. Um, and it's got a um, it's it's got a statue in it. It's like Buddy Christ, I think is what it's called. But he's he's got this. It's Jesus, and he's got this big smile on his face, and he's pointing at you like, "Hey." <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. I do know that Jesus. I didn't connect the title to the Buddy Jesus. Okay. But back when my dad was working at the theater, I do remember that uh, Jesus there at one point for one of the movie promos. And I very specifically. So, yeah, it must have been Dogma. <laughs> it must have been. 
And I very specifically remember he got in a bunch of those like Lance Armstrong style bracelets that said oh. WWJD. Okay. Yeah. And as a kid, I was like, Dad, what does this mean? And he's like, it means what would Jesus do? And I was like, oh, cool. He's like, yeah, it's for a movie. And I was like, oh, is it like a good, like, should I go see it? Is it like a good movie about Jesus? And he's like, no. No, <laughs> no. it's Kevin Smith. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's super funny, actually. <laughs> anyway, I, I posted it and then immediately deleted it because I don't know. I, I never want to. I, I know we're irreverent on this show, but I never want to be, you know, sacrilegious. I don't want to offend. I mean, but really, isn't Jesus everybody's buddy? Uh, that, honestly, that's how I feel about Jesus. When, Realistically. When that, when that Jesus is my homeboy movement. Yeah. You know, was that in the 90s? That may have yeah, even been in was. the 90s. Yeah. And then what, uh, what's uh, OPM, heaven is a half pipe, if I die before I wake, <laughs> I wish in heaven I could skate. <laughs> Honestly, that's the thing. Like, realistically, something about Jesus packing his bong. I don't know, but but it's a great, it's a great song. Okay, but realistically, like, if Jesus isn't your buddy, he's doing a bad job, right? You know, because the whole idea is that he's supposed to be kind and good to everyone. I probably picture Jesus more like Buddy Christ, yeah, than say any depiction of him in a in an in an American church. Yeah, and doing (laughs) this thing for some reason. So wow, did March come in like a lion? Yeah, and fell in love with the lamb. Twilight reference, you're welcome. (laughs) I heard that quote the other day and I was like, wow, I was such a stupid kid because I thought that was so profound. (laughs) It's fine. (laughs) So last week we recorded our show kind of in the middle of the snowstorm Mm -hmm. before the full impact could be felt and seen. But it was crazy. Right. We got like a foot of snow. It was insane. So much snow that um, they had to shut down school. Mm-hmm. It toppled carports. For a couple of days. It crushed, literally crushed a couple of carports. <laughs> yeah. Even Grand Targhee, which is a ski resort. Which needs the snow, is built for snow. <laughs> yeah, a place that is specifically built to handle snow. <laughs> was like, hey, there's too much snow. <laughs> had to shut down a couple Saturdays ago. Right. Wow, it was crazy. And 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 I uh, back to two episodes ago. I need to chalk one up for Mikey because I'm like, I don't think we're quite done yet. <laughs> and I feel so dumb. I really thought I was oh. I was way too opt- I was this wide eyed optimistic little girl who was like, Oh, it's finally spring. I can wear my pretty dresses again. And then this happened. <laughs> but uh, but first of all, Idaho. And second of all, yes. yeah, I don't blame you because we did have like three or four weeks of 40 degree days. Right. Consistently. I was like, this is great. Exactly. And the groundhog didn't didn't see a shadow. Like all of the cards were stacked in my favor and Mike still won. It was <laughs> <laughs> bunch of crap. <laughs> it was st- it was still very much a... Uh, El Nino winter until it wasn't. <laughs> right, right. Like, okay, my power went out for 25 hours? It sure did. <laughs> that wasn't fun. That well, wasn't very cash money. It wasn't fun at your house, but you did come hang out with me instead, and that was pretty fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun to hang out at your house, and we got so bored, <laughs> which is typically something that doesn't happen, but you know. Right. Well, and it was less that and more that we were... um open to exploring more than we usually are. <laughs> and we happened to come across on my on my Broadway HD subscription a little something called the Toxic Avenger musical. <laughs> so we start watching it and halfway through I'm like this is nothing like the movie. And Carly said there's a movie? Well, here's the thing. I knew there was a movie, but like I hadn't seen it and I was like how is it not like the movie? Because every other time I've seen a musical based on a movie, it's actually been more or less pretty accurate, just with more fun. It is a terrible, disgusting film, conceptually, Mm -hmm. and also the acting is horrible. And there's a couple of parts in that movie, even though it's from 1984, there's a couple parts from that movie that I'm not even going to tell you about on this podcast, and you know how rowdy we get. Okay, and also, I'm kind of mad that you lumped it into the same category as has been, because has been at least has artistic value. You know, it's got good <laughs> yeah. storytelling, the songs are great, it, it's well done. Now this. <laughs> how how this movie. So poorly done, and also just gross and weird, you know. How it spawned three or four sequels. Right. And then a couple years later, a kid's cartoon. And apparently now, a musical. <laughs> Right. Yeah, which also 
the acting, everything was so overacted. It's yeah, it's terrible in every way, shape, and form. The 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 they're all over actors. Yeah, I've seen less overacting in a middle school pro- in a middle school production of anything. Yeah, you know. So here we are spending a lot of time to tell you it's horrible. Don't watch it. And that's the thing. You told me all of that before we watched it. Unless. And I was still impressed by how fucking terrible it was. You're into that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it would be the perfect MST3K style, make, yes. watch it to make fun of it experience. Yeah. Kind of like love, <laughs> love never dies. If yeah. you're not an impressionable child, this is for <laughs> yes. adults only. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like the sequel to Phantom of the Opera that I just found out about <laughs> in the last year. Thanks to you. Right. And your and- Broadway HD. <laughs> Anyway, point is, if you're going to watch it, watch the musical, not the movie. The movie sucks. And also, why didn't he just take off the damn tutu? The entire movie, he's Spoilers, wearing it. Spoilers, Carly. We've talked about this. It's 40 years old. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but genuinely, the entire movie, he's wearing this tutu that he could have changed out of. I wish, honestly, <laughs> I wish I had never seen that movie. There are some things you can't unsee. Right. I'm glad I saw it because I think it's sort of funny to look at, but like... And the main character, even before he becomes a superhero, is just so irredeemable that once he does become a superhero, you like you can't root for him. Yeah, yeah, you weren't rooting for him in the first place, right? Like there, like he was such an underdog <laughs> that he was no longer an underdog. He was just weird and gross. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly how I was in high school. Yeah. Oh, you think you were? <laughs> we've seen my picture. If not, Michael, throw it up on the IFAF uh, Facebook or something. We, we've promised to do that, and we still haven't. Yeah, you know what we should. So, a day without power was lots of fun, mm-hmm. and then not only a power outage, but then a meta outage the following Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, just a few days. A few days later. Yeah, you know, I wake up in the morning. I think checking Facebook and Insta is w- not the first thing I do, but it's it's in my list, my top ten list of when I wake up. Oh yeah, for sure. See what's going on. Yeah. And there, and it's it was sort of acting like I had been locked out of my account, like hacked. Right, right. In fact, a group of forty state attorneys general have sent a letter to Instagram and Facebook parent company Meta, expressing deep concern over what they say is dramatic a dramatic uptick of consumer complaints about account takeovers and lockouts. Whoa, really? And I've, I've actually known a couple people that have been locked out of their Facebook. Oh, well, that makes me kind of wonder if I need to scrub my Facebook a little more. Although most of it is just like cringy stuff that I posted <laughs> in high school. So thank goodness. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Your username was cool dude for 2069. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, it was kind of funny because that same morning I woke up and I had. So I woke up and I tried to tech- I tried to check my Facebook and I couldn't load it. And I was like, whatever, I don't care. I was already running late like I usually am. And uh, just, you know, went on to my next thing instead. And then I get a text from you, which is really uncommon because usually you contact me through the Facebook Messenger. Yeah. And you were like, hey, is your Facebook out too? And that's that's when I was like, oh, phew, it's not just me. Everything's fine. <laughs> yeah. And I had to call a, a couple of people and ask mm-hmm. because I got stuck in this endless loop like, oh, enter your username. Okay. Enter your password. Great. Enter your username. Right. And back and forth. And like, so when it finally did come back online, mm-hmm. I've got Facebook on three devices. I don't know about you. Uh, phone, iPad, and desktop. I was able to use my iPad that was still logged in Mm -hmm. because obviously my desktop and phone, I had already blown that. Right, right. But now your devices that you are logged into can talk to your other devices that you're logged out of and can log you in. Okay. Because like I'd heard that they can like log you out of them. You but I didn't know that you could log into them from it, other devices. It's the first time I've seen it. Maybe everybody else knows this and I'm just Wild. stupid. Huh. But that was handy. Uh-huh. But then I, you know, I but I saw somebody else who was going through the same thing post later. Like they had a like a page long of this is me, this is me, this is me. We've noticed somebody's tried to log you in on this device. Is that you? And you keep answering this is me. <laughs> it, it was just it was bizarre, it was frustrating, and it made me realize that I might rely too heavily on meta products. Maybe. Like, hey, Zuck, maybe you should spend a little less time building that bunker of yours in Kauai. Did you hear about this? He, he bought up a bunch of properties with shell companies. Right. So no one would know it was him. Kind of like Walt Disney had to do when he was purchasing mm-hmm. property in Orlando for Disney World. Right, right. Like, because if they had found out it was him, they would have jacked up their prices, right? Of course, yeah. 
Anyway, maybe you should spend less time on your bunker and more time on, um, you know, your product. Yeah. That has made you billions. Which also, I think it's so hilarious that, you know, millionaires and billionaires are building bunkers. Because it's like, okay, honey, let's say that you do survive whatever apocalypse you think is coming. How are you going to live? Because, <laughs> like, sure, you can run Facebook, but, like... Can you farm? You've been living Can off the backs food? of everybody else for your entire life. I'm just saying, like, all of the rich people building bunkers are just so delusional because even if they do survive it, they don't have any poor people left to work for them. So, <laughs> sorry, well, you're going to starve anyway, dude. I'm sure they probably have a pretty well-stocked fallout shelter or whatever. You're right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they'll starve in luxury once they go through all of that. Right. Yeah. They'll have a good year, too. Five. Well, shit just got even. dark. But, you know, <laughs> well, you know, when the rich have nothing to eat, they have nothing to eat. But when the poor have nothing to eat, they'll eat the rich. So. Oh, that's right. That's where that expression comes from. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Something like that. Oh, but the good news is after almost snowpocalypse 2024, <laughs> it says, we because we've had a less than average snowpack. Uh-huh. Snowpack is important to farmers. <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, The good news is we're now... We've exceeded 100% oh, good. of our average predicted snowpack for the year. Nice. Okay. So the farmers are going to be okay this year. Mm -hmm. I always, I, growing up here, I always heard on a rainy day <laughs> from somebody who obviously didn't like the rain, they would say, well, the farmers need it. Mm -hmm. Now I could live in Seattle. Me too. I could live in Forks, Washington. Oh yeah. I'm basically a vampire anyway. Like my, my skin <laughs> is the same color as this wig. <laughs> yeah. You like the rain, right? I do. I do. Yeah. The only problem is that my dog doesn't. So like <laughs> I'll try to take him out and he'll like act like he's going to pee and then he won't. And then he'll walk inside and then he'll pee. Cause he's like, well, I didn't want to get my paws wet. <laughs> he's a little princess, isn't he? He is. Maybe you should get brat. him a tutu. Yeah. You know what? I think he deserves one. Well, since things have already gotten kind of dark, let's talk about Christopher Tapp. A couple weeks ago, you may remember his death was ruled officially as a homicide. Mm -hmm. And now more details are coming out about it. And it's just so sad. Yeah. But we'll tell you about it anyway. Here's what we think we know so far. There's one guy in custody. He turned himself in. Right. He was a suspect in the murder. Christopher Tapp was in Vegas. It says, okay, Las Vegas Resort. So it doesn't identify it. Maybe we know. He was in Vegas. I believe he was hosting a party. Mm -hmm. At that party, there was one designated bedroom or bathroom called the party room. Okay, yeah. And inside the party room, there was cocaine. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah. And Christopher Tapp allegedly offered some cocaine to a 22-year-old female uh -huh. who happened to be the stepdaughter of one Don Rodimer. Okay. He's a WWE wrestler, a congressional candidate, and he's 45, father of six. Okay. And this was his stepdaughter, and I guess he went up to Christopher Tapp and said, don't ever talk to my daughter again, or something fatherly and protective. You know those headlines where the more you keep reading, the worse it gets? That's what just happened right now. Because the first question I had was, yeah. why was this guy partying with his stepdaughter at a party like this, like there's there's a huge difference if you go to a neighborhood Christmas party and you're partying with your stepdaughter there versus a party with a party room that has cocaine in it. This okay. is the headline for the Daily Mail. WWE wrestler Dan Rodimer, 45, charged with murdering exonerated Vegas man, quote, killed him at Halloween party while dressed as Barbie's Ken after he offered cocaine to his 22-year-old stepdaughter. It just gets wild. Okay, was the daughter dressed up as Barbie, though? I don't know. Come on, Barbie, let's go party. <laughs> Ugh, oh. And also, does that make it better or worse if she was? <laughs> oh, you know? Like, there are just so many questions around all that. And also, dude, like, she's an adult. She can choose what she wants to do. We don't need that going on there. Yeah, you know, it's a sticky wicket, isn't it? Yeah. Because like you said, he probably shouldn't have been there with his daughter. Right, that's already weird. And then, but <clears throat> since he was, he wasn't in party mode, he was in protective father mode, which I also understand. Sure. I don't understand committing homicide. Yeah, and that's the thing. If you're cool with going out and partying with your daughter or stepdaughter like this, 
then you also have to kind of be cool with the things that come around with partying like this. And you have to understand that she's enough of an adult to make her own decisions. Hey, honey, are you having a good time tonight? Great. Me too. I'd really appreciate it if you didn't do cocaine. Right. Not with me around. Not while I'm in charge of you. Yeah. I, I can't look the other way on something like that. I mean, how do you have that talk with your kids? I guess you just don't take them to a drug-fueled Vegas party yes, to begin with. Exactly. There's a huge difference between the neighborhood Christmas party and something in Vegas. <laughs> but that's the slippery slope, right? You think, oh, going to a party at a hotel. Cool. That's cool. This is great. And then the crazy shit happens and you're like, well, I wasn't expecting that. Ah! That's more like a slippery cliff. You weren't. You know, like you're yeah. you're plateauing here with like birthday parties and family get togethers. And then there's partying in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. You know? And then there's, yeah, hookers and blow or whatever the situation was. Right, right. A little bit different. So a couple of weeks ago, I saw the Idaho Falls Farmer's Market soliciting for vendors uh -huh. for the 2024 season. You know that the Idaho Falls Farmer's Market is every Saturday, 9 to 1. But in this message, they were saying it was Saturdays from 9 to 2, oh. May through October. And I'm like, what? Well, last week, they finally came out with it and said, hey, by the way, the Farmer's Market's going to go till 2 p.m. on Saturdays now. Which, honestly, I'm so happy about. Uh -huh. Because all last season, I, for some reason despite being told several times, was convinced <laughs> that they went on till two. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The farmer's market will have an extra hour, which is hilarious because I remember like trying to order a corn dog at 12.59 p.m. <laughs> and the rent cops were like, shoo, 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 commoners. <laughs> Out of the way. No, you can't have anything. And I kind of get it. Like, they got to get <laughs> stuff cleaned up. It's a major roadway. Yes, I get it. And also... Sorry that you want a little culture in town. <laughs> yeah, but that's exciting. Looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. And another piece of news. Holy cow. If you haven't driven by Jackson Hole Junction, uh -huh. that's okay. I swear I went to an event. It's basically Sunnyside and I-15 right there. Right. Okay. All the new car dealerships. There. First, mm -hmm. first it All was Teton Toyota things. and they were out in the middle of nowhere. Right. And then B and then Teton Volkswagen. Uh-huh. Except before that, I think it was BMW of Idaho Falls moved their dealership there. Mm -hmm. Smith moved across the street. Mm -hmm. Now in Jackson Hole Junction, Ron Sayer has their brand new dealership. Which is sort of funny that you have to drive so far to get to a car dealership. Because what if you need a car <laughs> to drive all that way? And you know why they put all the dealerships in the same place, right? Well, so that you can easily hop from lot to lot. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's the same reason why... Still to this day, you'll find a lot of Burger Kings across from a McDonald's or very right. near in proximity mm -hmm. to. Or hotels all clustered together. Exactly. Like so, Lindsay Boulevard. Speaking of hotels, I swear I went to something in the conference center at the Holiday Inn and Suites in Jackson mm -hmm. Hole Junction last summer and there was nothing else around. Right. And now there's apartment. Here, I took a little video. There's apartments. There's a Maverick. There's like... Office buildings. Right. There's, oh, and the reason, the whole reason I went, a brand new Taco Bell. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I remember you texting me and being like, hey, look out for the new Taco Bell on Sunnyside. And like, I drive down Sunnyside all day long. Nothing. No idea where it was. Now, here's the thing. I drive down the like upper side of Sunnyside. Yes. The not side. the lower side. Yeah. So, of course, I didn't go that way. But I got a Baja Blast and mm -hmm. a Mexican pizza and some steak tacos. And Which is pretty cool. And also, mm. you don't even have to go to Taco Bell to get a Baja Blast anymore. That's right. Is nothing sacred anymore? I think that they had like a 20-year exclusivity deal. And that's, that's a pretty good deal. Expi it's hard to believe that it's been around for 20 years, but I think that's the case. Right. Well, no, no wonder Americans are so fat. <laughs> that stuff's good <laughs> and full of sugar. I got the sugar free. I got the, what, mm -hmm. the Z. I don't think they call it zero. I think that's Coke's thing. Oh, but, really? Uh, what, what do they call I it? I didn't know that they had sugar free, sugar free Baja Blast. They do, and I got it on tap. Whoa. Okay. Tasty, tasty. All right. You know what? I'm going there for a sugar free Baja Blast mm, next time. Mm -hmm. Okay, a few more things to talk about. One of them will be from our future selves. We'll explain mm -hmm. that in a minute. But first, something you should know about for St. Patty's Day. It's this Sunday, March mm -hmm. 17th. So St. Patty's Day is on a Sunday. Well, you know, I mean, most of the Irish are also Catholic, so yeah, there's communion wine. Yeah, I'm just saying, maybe we can make this work. 
<laughs> it's funny because coming up in Idaho fall, what? I was just thinking a little bit of red wine and green beer. You got Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a Irish Christmas. <laughs> it's just so funny, though, because coming up in Idaho Falls, like we, ne- no one ever made a big deal. Right. Uh, for St. Patty's Day. Well, yeah, because like half of them don't even care about all the green beer. Right. And I mean, you just put up your little uh, window cling shamrock or shillelagh or shenanigans. <laughs> Maybe a leprechaun and a rainbow here and there. And then look for people who weren't wearing green and give them a little pinch. <laughs> you know, I went to visit my grandma the other day and she painted exactly one toenail green. <laughs> so that someone, if they pinch her, she gets to pinch them back. <laughs> oh, she's smart. I know. I thought that was, <laughs> I thought that was pretty clever. So Saturday, the 16th, is the big St. Patty's on Park. Oh, fun. That's the street that's uh, that's in front of the Celt that's not Broadway. Right, uh-huh. Yeah. And they're going to have all sorts of fun stuff. Of course, the IFFD mm-hmm. bagpipers are going to be there. Which I'm so excited for. I actually have an uncle who's part of that. You really? I do, yeah. Okay. Does he wear the kilt and everything? The he whole does. Get up? He yeah, does. He does. Right. He's actually done some bagpiping for us for different events, too, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, he's really good. Um, my two favorites on bagpipes, of course, are Scotland the Brave. Uh-huh. That goes dun 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 and mm-hmm. Amazing Grace. Right, oh, right. Man, yeah. Yeah. Gotta have that. I'm sure they'll do both of those. You got it at that and point. Then maybe the Irish washerwoman. Yeah. <laughs> I'm way off key, but that's fun. It sounds like a blast. <laughs> yeah, I like it. They'll have so this is Saturday, three to seven, St. Patty's on Park. Uh, dress in green, of course, mm-hmm. <laughs> and drink like the Irish. <laughs> There's going to be free swag, McMurphy oh, Bros nice. and Co. I do love the McMurphy Bros. They're always so fun. And an Irish dance academy that I dare not pronounce. Oh, I love that. That's yeah. actually really cool. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I love the idea of all of that. And I hate the idea of braving the crowds for it. Right. Do you get a little claustro? I think I do. Here's the thing. I It's that... I feel so trapped in a herd of dumb. Like no one, <laughs> no one is moving in the way that I need them to, and it's not synchronized. And I just want to be able to move freely. Oh, the easy solution to that is have a couple green beers, and you'll be fine. <laughs> no, oh, that makes then it you'll worse. be part of the problem. Oh <laughs> no, then I'll be even more mad and even more belligerent. If you're going to celebrate in that way, you can pre-order your drink tokens and save. Buy oh, five nice. tokens, get one for free. Link on this post. Oh, that's that's actually really smart. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you could like pre-limit yourself too. So, you know, make sure that you're not a jerk the rest of the night. I'm just going to have these five. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> After number five. Hey, has anybody got another ticket? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. So we're doing what we do on busy weekends, which is we sort of do this show in a couple of parts. And now we're going to throw it to our future selves, Mm -hmm. who will tell you all about the Snake River Animal Shelter Furball. So we just got back (laughs) from the Furball, the Snake Mm -hmm. River Animal Shelter Furball. I'm pretty much dressed the same without the guy liner. Yeah. But I did have these really super cool glasses. Hang on. And you have sparkle brows. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And they're real cute. They did. uh, Thanks, Lisa, for doing my sparkle brows. Yeah. Yeah, which I think is so smart, too. You know, add to the outfit, add the door, you know? Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. Yeah. So. Here we go. All right. We're gonna, this was his big shtick. <laughs> we're going to disco tonight. Hang on. Boom. Yeah, baby. Yeah. And then you can yoink. He, yeah. That's what I was hoping for. And if you bob your head, it even looks cooler. It looks very at party rockers in the house. Yes. Imagine <laughs> yeah. some heavy EDM music going on. <laughs> right, right. Or as Tyler from A&B Productions did tonight, mm-hmm. a bunch of 80s stuff. Right, right. Yeah, I was Or like, you know, if maybe you were on a substance, then oh, this yeah. might oh, be very exciting for you. Are you <laughs> are you referring to Molly, MDMA, <laughs> methylene dioxy, methamphetamine? I'm not referring to anything because I don't know drugs. I don't do them. Sorry. <laughs> Developed by the German pharmaceutical company Merck, used as a truth serum in World War One, legal in the USA until 1985, uh, used in marriage counseling because it belongs to the family of drugs called intactogens, which Mikey. literally means touching within. Too in much? The, in the coolest way, you might know too much. <laughs> I did a little research. What? <laughs> I know you fall out of those weird little holes sometimes. <laughs> I do. I've told you. Mikey obsesses. My, you Mikey do. hyperfixates. You look lovely once again. Thank you. <laughs> 
Cut. I got the dress from Lily's on A Street, my friend's shop. My hair is by Eileen Campbell at Hair and Dippendy. Uh, this is a little Amazon special. And the jewelry <laughs> is kind of a... This is actually a really neat piece. I got it in the last bookshop in L.A., and I don't know if you can replicate it. Sorry, dudes. The theme was <laughs> Tales from Space Tonight. Yeah, which is so cute. <laughs> at, at the furball. And also, uh, realistically, animals have a really terrible history of being in space. So, <laughs> Pigs in space. Well, I mean, in the sense oh, that any time that an dog? animal has been sent into space, they haven't really been expected to come back. Yeah, but what are those tardigrades? Yeah, those things, yeah, like those life, are great. Yeah, they can exist basically anywhere. Life can survive mm-hmm. on like meteorites and stuff. Yeah, no, but I'm talking about like critters you could find at an animal shelter, like the furball. I'm talking about just living things. Like they even say that it's possible <clears throat> that our Earth may have been seeded hmm. with life on a biological organisms. Oh yeah, on a meteorite that crashed into Earth. Oh yeah, totally. Like we were sort of a a geosphere. We were the tardigrades of the day. And a meteor made us a biosphere. (laughs) That's cool, man. How'd we get off on that? Mm. Anyway, as we understand it, congratulations, Snake River Animal Shelter. I believe they reached their their goal. $100,000 goal tonight. How cool is that? I know that at least some of the money came from me. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Lane and Whitney Virgin uh-huh. from Virgin Riverland and Cattle Company. They rock so much. They were so much fun tonight. I actually bought Whitney a psychic reading tonight. Let me tell you about uh, my favorite thing of the evening. <laughs> well, and here's the funny thing. <laughs> right when she was done with the reading, she had to run to the bathroom. And at that time, I actually ran and bought those cups for us. <laughs> so what do you think this looks like? <laughs> uh, well, Mike, it looks like two uh, identical cups, except one's clear and one's purple mm-hmm. and full of snow. Well, let me tell you something. Look at this. This is, oh. <laughs> I'm spilling snow everywhere. But what's cool about these cups is, yeah. They I'm change st- based on temperature. I'm still impressed by the stupidest stuff. It, it changes color when your cup gets cold. So let's see if How we can make that? this. So now I've transferred the heat. You know what? When I was a kid and my dad was getting merch from the theater, he got some from a, a movie called I Love You, Man. Uh-huh. And it was a mug. Paul Rudd. Uh-huh. And the dude from How I Met Your Mother. Right. Jason and it, somebody. Around. And it changed color to from white to pink when it was cold. And I took that to girls camp with me because I thought it was the coolest. And so the entire week I drank out of a mug that said, I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> And looking back, I'm sure the other girls were completely unimpressed, (laughs) you know, but I thought it was cool. (laughs) How long do these last? Are these like glow sticks and they're done tomorrow morning? Oh, no, they last forever. They last forever. Okay. They'll keep doing that. Why am I so impressed by stupid, silly stuff like this? Did you know that there are Barbies that do that? Really? Oh, like a plethora of them. So many different types. I wish. And they're all very cool. All women in general would do that. So we I mean, change color based look, on temp. Well, we do. Look we at go- my color. I'm either hot or cold. Figure it out, buddy. <laughs> okay, to be fair, we don't change color. We change position. We go from huh to. <laughs> okay, body language. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's Which some I hope men have a hard time with, but. <laughs> anyway, and let's while we're throwing out mad props, let's say hi to Tyler from A and B Productions yeah. who killed it. Hosts. And our good buddy Brad Barlow. B2X was so uh-huh. and he looks so, so good great. tonight in his little spacesuit. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle Zeal Dingman. Who I can't believe the good work that she's done at the Snake River Animal Shelter. She's killing it. This yeah. is the second episode in a row we've talked about her. Right. Also, what's up to Gray? What's up to Dane? That was fun. Oh, man. Well, and also Dane in his barf outfit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hilarious. From Spaceballs. Yes. I guess so. Every table. There were like 40 tables, I want to say, of 10 I'd say like each. 35. Okay. But damn near. Okay. And each table, you know, had everybody go around and say what they were willing to bid. On a dessert. To the Snake River Animal Shelter. Mm-hmm. For the sole purpose of being at the front of the line to pick out these beautiful, and everybody beautiful like donate, there's this really long table of cakes. <laughs> yes. Like wildest imagination cakes. In a world of pure imagination. So our table didn't do too bad. We were in the top <laughs> yeah, we 10, were like, I think. I think we were top five. 
Whitney goes up there and uh, oh, choose that chooses out the most delicious looking. The whole time I'm thinking, what's she gonna get? What's she gonna get? <laughs> I'm gonna be happy with anything. I'll be happy. German chocolate cake, fine. I'll mm, be honest. Cherry pie, you know fine. What? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be the jerk here. I'm not happy with any dessert. Yeah. I don't like chocolate cake. I like chocolate. But I don't like things that are like not chocolate, chocolate that are flavored to be and, chocolate. Yeah. Like, it, it feels so artificial to me. You're not a n- normal person. Well, <laughs> I'm not. It's we know fine. <laughs> it's fine. But no, but most like, people. <laughs> I don't like chocolate flavored cake. You know, like, either be chocolate or be cake. Don't be both. I like those fruity vanilla E flavors. It's different. And speaking of fruit, she <laughs> just won the night. She, she picked did. Out a, a delightful lemon cheesecake. Oh, Which with was lemon curd on top of it. Amazing. Oh, it was the best. How cool <laughs> are these And of cups, course, though? because she's the, the nicest person ever, she and her husband sent us home with a good portion, if not all, I haven't looked in the box yet, of that cheesecake. What's in the box? <laughs> right? Great time. Listen, if you yeah. get the chance to go to the Snake River Animal Shelter Fur Ball, do it. Or just the Snake River Animal Shelter. Thanks, Virgin Riverland and Cattle Company, for inviting us this evening. A great time was had by all. Now back to our regularly <laughs> scheduled programming. Oh, that's fantastic. Give it up for uh, Mike and Carl from IFAF. They did a great job. Our future selves did they a great job. They looked like they had a really good time, too. Yeah. Yeah, good for them. Mm-hmm. Well, and you know, that dress that uh, she slash I was wearing in that clip, uh, I actually got in my friend's consignment shop over on A Street. That's Lily's Consignment Boutique. And it's so cute. And she's only making it cuter. You mentioned her earlier in the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bra- so under brand new ownership and management, she's doing a great job. I did my part and I liked their page on Facebook. Right. So right. I can see other stuff. They've got some really cool dresses. Well, and she has a crazy amount of stuff that's brand new with tags. Okay. Some of it that I offered her, but, <laughs> but also some that she just sourced herself, which I'm really impressed by. Matter of fact, that dress was one of them. Well, we're going to give you just the biggest plug we can, Mm -hmm. which is you are IFAF this week. Lily's on A Street, 257 A Street. Chris Pie 5, yeah. 21 Finger Gun Salute. And Chef's Kiss to to you. you. And we wish you the best. And lots and lots and lots and lots of business. Yeah. Well, that's our show. We're going to leave you with a sad, sad story. You may have noticed that we took advantage of the snowfall and got a new intro done oh, if, yeah. if you watch the show. Mm-hmm. If you listen to the show, you didn't notice it at all. But at the beginning, when the TikTok chick is talking, <laughs> right, t- sort of teeing up the show, we usually do a little drone pull away from a notable Idaho Falls location. This time mm-hmm. around, it happened to be the Japanese Friendship Garden Bridge, mm-hmm. the one in between the Key Bank parking lot and the actual garden. Right. And we have a friend, Ben, who donates his time. And, you know, we usually go out to lunch afterwards or whatever. We make it worth, worth, worth this while, I think. And Ben's drone is called Little Arthur. Mm-hmm. And Little Arthur had a couple three passes. And then on the fourth or fifth one. On the very last one we'd planned, by the way. On the very last one. Very last one. Hit a tree and fell into the Snake River. <laughs> and I remember watching it happen too. Because oh, no. right before that, he had done this expert pull up where he managed to miss the tree just right. <laughs> but then on this one, right when we were expecting it, he didn't. <laughs> it was, th- you know how they say things happen in slow motion? It was like a no. <sighs> Oh, no, it was terrible. I just felt my stomach fall out of my butt when it happened, dude. <laughs> I was so upset. And the plop that it made? I remember trying to watch it as it fell, okay. and I thought to myself, like, okay, it hit branches, so it's going to land on the ground. It's going to be fine. Like, we'll figure it out. And then I saw, I watched it, and I saw that splash, and I was like, oh, no, it's in the river. And now here it is, the last flight of Little Arthur. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. <laughs>